Hello friends, hi there, how are you? Good morning. I'm Dr. Shreeful Halim and today I'll talk about another long case of nervous system uh, that is paraplegia. So that's a common case which you will get in words and also in the examinations and the final professional exams. So please uh, study this case uh, well. Okay. So first thing that we want to differentiate in a patient with paraplegia is uh, is it spastic or is it flaccid. So if it is a uh, flaccid paraplegia, the differential is, is very small. And the most important differential that you should put in mind, the most two important are Guillain-Barre syndrome or GBS. And also another one is hypokalemic periodic paralysis. So both, both of them are common. And in the list of differentials of spastic paraplegia are a bit longer. And uh, if you consider that what's most common in our country is Port's disease. And also uh, if you consider in other aspects like if, if, if a patient is a younger age with spastic paraplegia, the most likely call will be, which will be Port's disease or tuberculosis of the vertebra. I mean especially which occurs in the intervertebral space and then involves the vertebra. And if a patient of an older age presents with paraplegia, the most likely reason behind that will be a cancer or a malignancy involving the bones. Maybe a primary malignancy of the bones such as multiple myeloma or maybe a secondary malignancy in the bones. Maybe if, if the patient is a male, maybe the cancer came from prostate or metastasis from prostate. If the patient is female, the, the metastasis may come from uh, breast or may come from ovarian cancer or something like that. So uh, those are the most basic differential lists that you always should put in consideration. Uh, and some other differentials that, that may be present in those patients are transverse, transverse myelitis. So this is not very uncommon. This is also present in post cases. So let's, let's put a brief note about how to differentiate between all those differential diagnoses. So first, the flaccid types, the GBS or Guillain-Barre syndrome. So even you all know that it presents in a manner of ascending paralysis. So it actually first involves the lower limbs, then gradually involves the upper limbs. And, uh, and, the, and the, there is typically a history of dysentery or maybe a history of respiratory drug infection a few days or maybe a weeks or two weeks back. And that led to an autoimmune reaction leading to uh, production of an autoimmune disease which is causing a peripheral neuropathy and leading to flaccid, para fast, flaccid paraplegia and ultimately can cause quadriplegia. And in this patient the most important thing to look for in examination is the reflexes and there will be no reflexes at, at all in case of GPS. But the sensations will be okay or there can be some paresthesias or pain. But, but, but there will be some sensations, there will, uh, there will not be a loss of sensation, there will be some sensations, maybe some paresthesias can be associated with GBS. And hypokalemic period paralysis, which is commonly a familial disease, the patient will typically have a history of intake of a heavy meal, maybe he joined a party or maybe he joined a wedding, wedding meal. So those type of histories you will get and the patient will actually improve after some period, maybe without any treatment. Uh, it's, a, it's not a very bad disease. Okay, so about the spastic paraplegias, if the patient, uh, if you want to check for if, if this patient has a uh, sports disease or something like that, uh, the, the most important thing is to look for history, that uh, history of pulmonary tuberculosis. Uh, so so that, that, that cannot be always present because vertebral, cal cal vertebral bodies or intervertebral discs can be present uh, it can be infected with TB primarily, so there may not be a history of previous pulmonary tuberculosis. And the important thing is look for gibbous in the in the spine. So this patient can have big gibbous and can have some typical features of tuberculosis, like patient can have anorexia, low grade fever with evening rise of temperature and neck sweats and some weight loss. Okay, and if the pa if you consider about other differentials like multiple myeloma, the patient will have bone pain and the patient will be will have pallor and fatigue and along with those uh, along with those the patient's uh, age will be more and if you do investigation uh, the ESR will be sky high and there will be increased roller formation or such as like that and in case of secondary metastasis uh, uh, those features will be same and the patient 
may have uh, may have other features like uh, features of primary malignancy like if the patient has prostate cancer the patient may have some urinary symptoms if the patient has breast cancer may have some axillary lymphadenopathy or some nipple discharge or something like that okay so another thing is uh, transverse myelitis so in case of transverse myelitis there is transverse in involvement of the spinal cord in a transverse manner so there is inflammation of the spinal cord and uh, th there actually spinal cord is involved but in other diseases like multiple myeloma or uh, in uh, in case of Ports disease or in case of uh, secondary metastasis to bone spinal cord is actually not involved the involved structures are surrounding the spinal cord so they actually presses the spinal cord and that produces the features of spinal cord compression but in case of transverse myelitis the spinal cord is transversely involved okay but in all those all those uh, involvement of spinal cords there will be some sensory levels especially in case of transverse myelitis there will be some sensory levels so well, what does it mean by sensory level so in case of uh, what, uh, sensory level means that there will be loss of sensation up to a certain vertebral level maybe a loss of sensation up to l1 up to t10 or something like that so this is very classic of spinal cord compression or involvement spinal cord so this will be present in all the cases like pores or multiple myeloma or secondary metastasis or transverse myelitis so another case uh, another case which is not that common is multiple sclerosis which can also present with pal uh, paraplegia uh, it will be a patient who, which is typically a female in young age and the patient will have multiple remissions and multiple uh, recurrence so recurrence and remissions are the rule in ma multiple sclerosis and the patient can have some optic neuritis and especially in optic neuritis the first thing that goes or first damage that occurs is damage to color vision so the patient can have problems with color vision in case of multiple sclerosis okay so those are the common differentials that you think but there are some uncommon differentials like gliomas like astrocytoma no, no sorry no, not astrocytoma oligodendroglioma or ependymoma those can also be present in very rare cases but they are very slow growing so the symptoms that that are present will be will be uh, after certain time so we will take time to develop and it will be from mild to moderate to severe and there will be a long lag time but in the other cases like multiple myeloma or secondary metastasis uh, the symptoms uh, will be very short and there will be also other features of malignancies okay so those are the very basics of the uh, history and clinical examination and one thing if, if the patient has a spinal cord compression or transverse myelitis the, the other things are that you will get some positive signs like uh, up, like that of upper motor neuron lesion which are you will have a positive Babinski sign or a extensor plantar response both of the same things you can have an exerted jarks so jarks will be ha more more pronounced and there will be increased tone when you move the joints and uh, you can have clonus, maybe a knee clonus, maybe an ankle clonus, or something like that. And if the uh, if those problems stays for a long time, patient in some cases can develop some uh, some bits of wasting. So those are the most common clinical evaluation practices that should be done in a patient with paraplegia. Thanks for watching the video and practice practice those things from Abdullah Sir's long case book there is a very good description of, of paraplegia patients also consult consult me if you have any problems thank you for watching the video and don't forget to like my channel and subscribe to it and share with your friends share the knowledge